Hello friends and welcome to this HIV video number two and this video is a continuation from the video one update that we have and all the new users who have just now uh, watched this video it is recommended that in case you have not watched the video number one please watch the video number one because we might be using many of the concepts from uh, video one into this in this video so welcome to this HIV volume 2 update 2018 in this update what are the topics we will be taking so the first we are going to talk about the HIV infection in HIV infection, we will talk about a little bit, just a brief about the microbiology of the virus. We shall talk about how the virus infects the CD4 cells or the macrophages a little bit about the pathology related to HIV virus. And once you understand pathology, we will discuss about the pathological basis, right, for making the pharmacological therapy. So what is the pharmacological therapy? for uh, like what are the ART drugs, ART drugs. To make you understand the ART policy by the NACO, you need to understand which are the available drugs. To understand the available drugs, you need to understand how they act and where they act and what are the utilities. And once you understand how and where they act, I need to tell you that how the virus was there. So there, there, there'll be, we'll build up a strong foundation on which we will build up the whole building of the NACO. The second topic we will discuss, then that is the core part of this uh, module, is we are going to discuss about the ART regimes under the NACO program or the National AIDS Control Organization program. Third is we will also talk about the ART drugs in special situations like special situations like pregnancy or in case of child who is born child born to a HIV positive mother or child exposed to HIV or in certain situations like uh, the patient has hepatitis or the patient has tuberculosis or any other big infections and then we shall point number four we shall also talk about point number four we shall also talk about the immune reconstitution inflammatory syndrome IRIS or various toxicities related to related to the HIV drugs and uh, of course we shall if the uh, we shall talk about the chemo prophylaxis chemo prophylaxis which is requir required for management of various other infections in case of people living with HIV and what about the pre-exposure prophylaxis or the post exposure what are what does the NACO have to say on that what is the recommended module? So all these I'll be talking is from a NACO uh, update document released in October 2018. So let us start with the first topic that is HIV infection. Section 1. If you talk about HIV infection, the HIV virus is kind of a circular virus which has an inner matrix and inside it has a capsid. Okay, so that capsid is the main core area where the HIV virus lives. So these, uh, the HIV, please remember the HIV virus is a diploid genome. What do you mean by diploid genome? It has two strands. It has, it is a double strand. It's not double strand. It's like two strands, two different strands of RNA and this virus has special three genes so there are three structural structural genes for this HIV what are the three structural genes we have the first gene that is the envelope gene this is the outer envelope so you have an envelope gene and uh, that is the first second is the gag gene and third is the pole gene so what are the envelope genes? Envelope genes are GP. They code for the protein that is GP120 protein and the GP41 protein. So on this envelope, you have some proteins like this. As you can see on the screen, there are some proteins like this. This outer thing, this outer bigger thing is what is the docking protein. This is the docking protein. It is GP120 docking protein. 
and this stalk, this stem which you see, it is a transmembrane glycoprotein that is the GP41 transmembrane glycoprotein. So the, these are the two envelope genes. Inside you have the GAG gene. So GAG genes are basically coding for the matrix and for the capsid. So this inside matrix, this inside matrix, it is coded by the GAG gene. GAG genes are nothing but the P24 and the P17 antigens. So this P17 is what is the outer matrix. P17 is the outer matrix protein and inside we have the capsid protein or the P24 core protein. P24 core protein is the inside. Inside this core protein, P24 structure, you have the heart of the virus that is these two small strands of RNA. These two small strands of RNA is what makes this RNA virus, uh, this the diploid genome RNA virus most unique and it also has two unique proteins one protein is protein one second is protein number two so what are these proteins so these proteins these protein molecules these are the pole proteins so pole gene codes for what pole gene codes for the integrase protein and for the most important uh, uh, most important protein which makes this HIV virus the most unique virus in the world is about the reverse transcriptase. So this is the reverse transcriptase. So please, uh, what I have done, I'll just summarize. There is an outer envelope protein. Inside the envelope protein, you have antigen protein. These are the GAG proteins, P24 and the P17 uh, proteins. And inside them, you have the pole genes which code for the most unique proteins in the HIV virus, that is the integrase and the reverse transcriptase. So what are these? These are the integrase and the reverse transcriptase. These are the reverse transcriptase and the integrase proteins. So that makes this HIV virus very unique. So what is this reverse transcriptase? Again and again, uh, I'm stressing upon. Please remember that this reverse transcriptase is a very unique protein it synthesizes, it makes new double-stranded DNA. It will make new double-stranded DNA from the existing genomic RNA. So the RNA of the HIV virus is converted into a double-stranded DNA. And now this double-stranded DNA using this new protein integrase, it, this integrase will help integrate this double-stranded DNA into the human genome and they will replicate something like uh, from uh, bacteriophage if you remember the lysogenic and the uh, cycles we have so where the phage particles will integrate into the dns of the of the uh, host dna so integrase basically integrates this double stranded dna into host genome so this is what is the utility of this uh, the pole genes Outside envelope genes, there is an interesting fact about these envelope genes. The outside gene, outside protein, that is the GP120 and the stock, that is the GP41, which is a transmembrane protein, these are also unique. These GP120s and the GP41, they actually search. These are like um, some signal finders and they will bind to special receptors. So this virus binds to using these GP120 and 41, they bind to special receptors that is the CCR5 receptors or the CXCR4 receptors. So CXCR5 receptors is found on macrophages. It is found on macrophages whereas CXCR is found on T cells, T helper cells. So in early infection CXCR in early infection the macrophages which are the antigen presenting cells the macrophages they will have the CCR5 receptors on their surface which bind to the GP120 core protein, which bind to the GP120 envelope protein. And in uh, T helper cells, there is CXCR4 expression which helps these uh, GP120s bind to the T helper cells. 
So uh, I'll tell you the utility of each one of these steps. So uh, the, a very important, like uh, not important, like uh, it was just there in news a few weeks back. All those in uh, uh, in December 2018, there was some news that uh, China China has actually produced uh, babies with uh, made uh, uh, genetically modified babies, right? So what is this? That people, this is a known fact. We already know this. That people who have Mind the words that people who have CCR5 genetic gene mutation, people who have CCR5 gene mutation, they can be homozygous for this gene mutation or they could be heterozygous, right? They could be homozygous or they could be heterozygous if they are homozygous. So don't you think if CCR5 expression is not there, these patients are actually immune these patients would be actually immune to HIV infection and in case it, they are heterozygous they follow a very slow course and in fact these type of mutations are protective in, uh, that is what uh, protective for HIV and that is what the medical advancement has been shown by uh, China country and uh, that was there in the news. So if you look around the HIV structure, HIV structure will have three proteins, the envelope protein, the GAC genes and the pole genes. Pole gene core for the, for the most notorious proteins. The GAC gene is the core antigen which we will use for diagnosis. So if in video number one you had uh, uh, listened, you had heard about how do we diagnose using SA1s, SA2 and SA3. In fact, confirmatory western blots no, uh, is almost not recommended by many authorities. CDC does not recommend western blots. So based, just based on the immunoassays, we can diagnose HIV with reasonable sensitivity and reasonable specificity. However, for your MCQ exams, you need to remember these few things about the microbiological aspect of the, of the uh, virus. So now let's see how this virus attacks. So I come to the next point, point number two, how does the virus cause infection? What is the pathogenesis or what is the patho pathology associated with this infection? So if you see the pathology of this virus, let us say that this is the virus. Let us say that this is the virus. This virus has these proteins. The GP120 and the GP41's proteins is there. And inside you have the heart of the virus RNA. So now there is a big time cell. It could be a macrophage or a T helper cell. Usually the T helper cells or the CD4 cells uh, are infected in later part of the infection and the, in the first phase of infection, there is the predominantly macrophages work. So there is expression, we have already told you, uh, just now we discussed that in macrophages, we have CCR5, whereas in T helper cells, we have the CHCR4 uh, receptors. So, and the first phase, there could be something known as CXCR4 receptors or there could be CCR5 receptors. So CCR5 for the macrophages, CXCR4 receptors for the T helper cells. So anyways, this uh, molecule, this uh, virus particle is going to come and attach to these any of these receptors. And using these receptors, they actually drill inside the cell and there is using these receptors there is uncoating of the virus uncoating of the virus the envelope protein is lost and there is penetration of the capsid penetration of the capsid only pure rna so inside rna comes inside the cell and of course it will bind with the ribosomes it will bind this rna will go with the ribosomes and using the enzyme that is reverse transcriptase. Using the enzyme reverse transcriptase, this is converted into a single stranded DNA. Further, which is further converted into a double stranded DNA using all under the enzyme, which is used as reverse transcriptase. Now this DNA, double stranded DNA. So now you have a double stranded DNA 
there is the nucleus of the cell. Now this double stranded DNA will go inside the nucleus of the cell. Inside the nucleus of the cell. So now if you go inside the nucleus of the cell, now there is an integrase enzyme. Now using the enzyme that is integrase. Integrase, this double stranded DNA combines with the host DNA host DNA and it integrates in itself into the host DNA under the action of next step under the action of RNA polymerase obviously it follows a normal translation route and there is production of the mRNA this mRNA will attach again to the ribosomes and produce the viral proteins so now there are the production of the viral proteins these viral proteins will be there plus mrna will also code for multi chain protein molecules so anyways not going into too much detail there is production of these proteins and these proteins combine with each other using which enzyme using a protease enzyme using a protease enzyme they combine with each other and there is expulsion there is expulsion of the viron particle and the cd4 cell or the macrophages they die so what i have told you is you have these enzymes so now what we have done is we have these enzymes we have the protease enzyme we have the reverse transcriptase enzyme we have the integrase enzyme and we have some expression of the CHCR4 or the CCR5 genes. So these are your areas, key areas on which research has been done and various uh, pharmaceutical, uh, pharmacological agents have been formed, right? So if you see all these enzymes, that is the reverse transcriptase, CXCR4, so now many, many things can happen. So now just to summarize this, there is a cell, the HIV virus will come, throw its RNA inside, and there will be action of the reverse transcriptase following integration into the host DNA, the replication of the viron particles, and so many small, small virons will be launched using the protease enzymes. And the CD4 cell, which act as a base for replication, is going to die. And that is the reason you have a decline in the CD4 counts, and there is immune deficiency because there is less of CD4 or the T helper cells. So now, let us see what are the agents which are there. So first thing, first is these CCR5s can be actually blocked. You can block this CCR5. You can block this CCR5 by use of first group of uh, drugs which we use in HIV. These are known as CCR5 receptor antagonists. So first is CCR5 receptor antagonist antagonist so this antagonist ccr5 receptor antagonist is miraviroc miraviroc which is a ccr5 receptor antagonist these are also known as entry inhibitors so the first group i can write all the drugs over here and we shall keep on filling first group that we are writing is uh, entry inhibitors entry inhibitors which can be like you have read about CCR5 uh, inhibitors antagonist. CCR5 receptor antagonist, which was group from Miraviroc, right? We can also have another drug over here. That is, if you see this area back again, so one of the entry inhibitors was Miraviroc. We have another entry inhibitors that in case of that in case of uncoating you prevent the uncoating of the viron particles and therefore you prevent the inhibition and you prevent the inhibit the penetration of the virus particle this is known as fusion inhibitors fusion inhibitors and the drug is enfu very tight so you have fusion inhibitors which will prevent the entry or you have CCR5 antagonists which again prevent the uh, entry. So you can have fusion inhibitors or the CCR5 antagonists.
Next, we can also have a reverse transcriptase inhibitors. Now, this reverse transcriptase can be of three further types. You can have reverse transcriptase inhibitors. These reverse transcriptase inhibitors can be of three types. You can have something known as all are sides, only one is tied, nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors, NRTI, nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors. For example, for nucleoside, we have zidovudine, stavudine or D40, zidovudine, lamivudine, 3TC or we have abecavir. All these are nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors. Second, we can also have another nucleoside which is a non-nucleoside, non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors. The non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors are efavirenz, efavirenz and nevirapine. Efavirenz and nevirapine. There is a third reverse transcriptase inhibitor which is not a nucleoside, it is a nucleotide NTRTIs. So you have NSRTIs or the nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors and you have the nucleotide. How I have remembered is nucleotide, T for tide, only one drug that is tenofovir, TDF tenofovir. So nucleotide reverse transcriptase inhibitors, nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors or non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors which are like another group of drug so you have another group of drugs that is reverse transcriptase inhibitors reverse transcriptase inhibitors could be nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors or non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors or nucleotide reverse transcriptase inhibitors so of course everything all said and done so if this is the molecule of the cell, this is the cell in which the virus is going to come. It will come, it will enter, but it will do nothing because there is no production of the double-stranded DNA. So the integrase is like not useful. You actually blocking the first enzyme that is the reverse transcriptase. Second, you can also block the, of course, so you can also block the integrase enzyme, right? You can also block the integrase enzyme. So these are integrase inhibitors. So you can have something known as integrase inhibitors. So what are the integrase inhibitors? Integrase inhibitors are raltegravir or dolutegravir. These are the integrase inhibitors. They have their own uh, disadvantages because of uh, a little bit higher toxicities. They are not so commonly used. So we also have another group that is integrase inhibitors, which are uh, raltegravir and dolutegravir. So these integrase inhibitors can be used or you block the reverse transcriptase. That was the most commonly used drugs. So now you have these uh, integrase inhibitors would uh, like integrase enzyme is there the joining of the viral DNA with the host DNA happens and then there is mRNA and there is protease enzyme. Now you can also act by inhibiting the protease enzyme. So the protease enzyme, we have the protease inhibitors. For these we have the protease inhibitors. So which are the protease inhibitors? You have many of the protease inhibitors like Protease inhibitors like lopinavir, rutinavir. So what are the protease inhibitors? They will inhibit the protease enzyme. Right? So fourth is, fourth group of drug will be the protease inhibitors. So what we have done is total four groups of drug or five drugs we have done. So I'll just recall, recapitulate everything, recall everything that at the first you have something known as CCR5 receptor antagonist. Second, you can also block the fusion inhibitors. Point number two is fusion inhibitors. Third, you can attack the reverse transcriptase. Fourth, you can stop the integrase. Fifth, you can stop the protease. These are the five classes of drugs that we have for use of, uh, for inhibiting HIV. Out of all said and done, which drug do you personally think 
would be the most beneficial don't you think that the entry inhibitors are the one of the best drugs entry inhibitors are one of the good drugs but unfortunately the medical science the the pharmacological knowledge that we have gained is not sufficient enough to manufacture or to develop these entry inhibitors which are of reasonable efficacy with lesser toxicity so these drugs are used these drugs i'm not saying these are not used meraviroc and all these can be used but they are not formulated under the national policies why because the the safety and the efficacy of these drugs is not yet not yet too much established what we have studied maximum is about the reverse transcriptase inhibitors and the protease inhibitors so predominantly speaking so predominantly speaking you have reverse transcriptase inhibitors and the protease inhibitors which are the most commonly used drugs other drugs like uh, raltegravir dolotegravir or enfuviritide that is the the fusion inhibitors or the ccr5 antagonists are not so commonly used so protease inhibitors and uh, reverse transcriptase are most commonly used and then we move ahead towards what are the what are the drugs what are the art regime before that i would also like to point out that uh, people who are uh, meraviroc is one of the most uh, studied drugs currently as far as the latest uh, trend of pharmacological agents is concerned uh, the maximum uh, like a uh, lot of research is going on meraviroc whenever we the patient is being put on meraviroc we um, this just for your general information that if a patient is supposed to be put on meraviroc that is a ccr5 antagonist it is very important to check for the tropism you check for the tropism what is tropism tropism is expression of the ccr5 receptor what i mean to say is that before putting the patient on meraviroc it is very important to find out whether this patient is having a ccr5 expression or a non ccr if this patient on tropism tropism testing is available at all the uh, standard hiv labs and tropism testing is important it will tell you whether the ccr5 is there or not so in case the tropism is yes that is there is a ccr5 is positive that means the meraviroc will work but in certain cases where people do not have the ccr5 they are already homozygous or heterozygous to ccr5 they already have a ccr5 mutation in those cases this ccr5 is negative so in those cases please remember the meraviroc will not act so we need to check for tropism so that was just a, a, a another important point for you to remember so you have these five classes of drugs which we have you know, talked about just now so entry inhibitors are one of the most studied topic but uh, the maximum utility is given by the reverse transcriptase and the protease inhibitors and that is what we actually use under the naco program under the by the cdc guidelines who guidelines uh, we have the in, in involvement of uh, reverse transcriptase enzyme inhibitors nnrti ntrti and and nrtis and the protease inhibitors so let's come to the section number 3 where we will talk about each of these drugs so now let us talk about the section 3 that is let's talk about the art drugs which are used in hiv so art is anti retro viral therapy we do not use the word heart that is highly active antiretroviral therapy because everything is now highly active so we have omitted the first two alphabets that is highly active so we just have an anti retroviral therapy art the standard first line i don't know why there is so much confusion on the social media so please mind it i'll i'll try to keep it as simple as possible any doubts in this you are most welcome to comment it on the video so the first section is i'm going to deal with the basic art and the next subsequent section we'll talk about art in pregnancy art in children born to hiv mothers and art in hiv uh, sorry art in hepatitis or art in tuberculosis so that will be my gross uh, uh, system in which we will go so let's talk about the first thing that is the general art for all patients as the first line drug the first line art for generally 
as a standard rule is TLE. TLE. What is TLE? It is Tenopo Weed plus Lamy Woodin plus E stands for Effa Virens. So this is a standard drug tenofovir lamivudine efavirenz tenofovir at the rate of 300 milligrams lamivudine at the rate of 300 milligram and efavirenz at the rate of 600 milligram so we have uh, tenofovir is what tenofovir if you remember t for t i told you there is only one that is ntrti it is from the ntrti group lamivudine is from nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors NRTIs and effavirenz is NNRTIs. So the standard drug is to block the reverse transcriptase. You put all the three things from each of the group and that is forms the standard regime. You have one NNRTI, one NRTIs and one NTRTIs. So this forms the standard regime as a single dose. It is given lifelong to the patient. This is your first standard line, first standard drug ART TLE. Tenofovir, Lamivudine and Efavirenz. It is given to all patients. It is given to all patients, all adults or to adolescents or to pregnant females until and unless specified there is a contraindication to it. Right. So this is a standard drug that is Tenofovir, Lamivudine and Efavirenz. It is given in and standard doses. So now for these TLEs, you need to remember that this TLE is to be given. This tenofovir, lamivudine and effavirenz combination as a single dose is always to be given two to three hours after dinner, after night food or dinner. The patients are advised because that's the maximum absorption time. And the patient is also to avoid any fatty food because of stress to the liver fatty food is to be avoided and in case of uh, diabetes mellitus or hypertension where you already have a, a potential to cause a renal or nephrotoxicity in those cases uh, we check for the renal toxicity so in cases of diabetes mellitus in cases of hypertension patients with hypertension check for nephrotoxicity very often because which drug is most nephrotoxic tenofovir is most nephrotoxic so this is your standard regime for uh, for uh, patients who are to be put on uh, ART now there is a second situation that in cases where in special situation number one So now there is a special situation number one. Special situation number one. In case of HIV 2 infection or HIV 1 and 2 combined infection. In case you have a HIV 2 infection or HIV 1 and 2 combined infection, now the drug of choice becomes tenofovir plus lamivudine lamivudine is the short form is 3tc okay so you have t you have l and you should have e over here effavirenz instead of e we use lopinavir and ritonavir combination lopinavir we use lopinavir and ritonavir combination so you have a lopinavir ritonavir combination where cases of HIV-2 and HIV-1 co-infection or in case the patient has HIV-2 infection alone. So this is what is the standard uh, part 2 for your information part 2. So that is first scenario. In certain situations, in certain situations where the people have renal disease, Mind you, the standard drug, I told you the standard drug, which was the standard drug, uh, standard drug was the standard ART was, the standard ART was TLE. This should be given to all patients whose weight is more than 30 kgs, whose age is more than 10 years. To all adults or adolescents, I told you, who are adolescents in a previous video also we talked, 
who are adults is 10 years to 19 years. So all patients age more than 10 years, weight more than 30 kg, we give the standard regime of T, L and E. Now in some cases, in certain situations where the weight is less than 30 kgs, not the age, I'm not talking about the age, we are not discussing pediatric ART right now, we are discussing adult ART or adults and ART. If the weight is less than 30 kgs or if there is an increased serum creatinine, there is evidence of evidence evidence of renal impairment in case there is evidence of renal impairment or there is serum creatinine increase rise in serum creatinine now in these cases you cannot give tenofovir instead of tenofovir we will substitute with tenofovir tenofovir t l and e instead of t we will give abecavir abecavir plus 3 tc plus efavudans. So instead of tenofovir, we stop tenofovir. So TDF is to be omitted. Just remember this renal impairment. I'm telling you again, T tenofovir is one very special drug. It is the only NTRTI nucleotide. Second tenofovir causes big amount of renal toxicity. It is nephrotoxic drug. So in case of nephrotoxicity, you are going to use abecavir instead of tenofovir. Abeca Vir instead of tenofovir and third i have already talked to you that in case of uh, this uh, lopina in case of hiv1 or hiv2 infection we use lopinavir or ritonavir combination in the same amount lopinavir uh, tenofovir is 300 milligram uh, lamivudine is again 300 milligram and lopinavir is 800 milligram and uh, ritonavir is 200 milligram as single dose as single dose OD lifelong in case of HIV-2 infections. So that uh, gives you the standard treatment, okay? Next we take up is scenario special situation number three. Next we take up special situation number three. We take up about ART in pregnancy. So in case of pregnant female, what is the ART to be given? So to keep it very simple, the pregnant mother who comes to the clinic, this pregnant mother might have a history of HIV infection or she might be on treatment. That is what concerns us. If she is on treatment or there is no treatment, right? So in case there is history of HIV infection and this patient is on treatment. So in case this female is on treatment. So if she is on ART, if she is already on ART, so continue and she becomes pregnant now. So you continue the ART. No change. That is TLE. No change. Mind you, I know efavirenz is teratogenic, but the NACO 2018 update is that the teratogenicity outweighs the risk of uh, uh, inhibiting efavirenz over here or not giving efavirenz to the female. So you continue with standard regime of T, L and E. Now in case this female who already had a history of HIV infection and was on treatment, if she is, for example, given this is her second pregnancy, we just ask her, did you ever take nevirapine before? So this female could be NNRTI, that is nevirapine exposed. In case she had taken nevirapine in the previous pregnancy or in case she had been put on a nevirapine uh, regime. So in those cases, we suspect NNRTIs is very special drug, uh, very special group. There is a presumed NNRTI uh, the resistance. So tolerance which develops. So there is a presumed, we feel, we fear for NNRTI tolerance. So in those cases, in case the nevirapine was already given. So in those cases, now you cannot give efavirenz because they both are from, if you recall, they both are from NNRTI drugs, right? So in these cases, you give T, L and E. E is not to be given, right? So we give 3 t uh, tenofovir plus we give 3TC that is lamivudine instead of efavirenz you substitute it with lopinavir and ritonavir 
So again, you have these protease inhibitors which will come into play because of suspected NNRTI tolerance or resistance, we fear for this. So this lopinavir, ritonavir is to be given to these females who are pregnant. Now lopinavir, ritonavir has chances of uh, hepatotoxicity along with teratogenicity. So therefore this TDF is given at the standard regime of 300 milligram. Uh, lamivudine is again given at the standard regime of 300. Lopinavir and ritonavir is to be given cautiously. So lopinavir is given at the rate of 200 milligram and ritonavir is given at the rate of 50 milligram. It is given as two times BD dose. It is given as two tablets BD dose, whereas these are given as single OD dose, right? And uh, this is the special regime that you have in case of pregnancy. So please remember in case of female who is already on ART, uh, no, not uh, about uh, nevirapine, so you continue the ART. If the female is taking nevirapine based ART, or she was already exposed, now you do not give her uh, effavirenz, you give her lopinavir and ritonavir. So in case this female did not take any treatment or she was not diagnosed, no history of HIV. No history of HIV, you stay with the standard regime. What is the standard regime? Start her on T, L and E. Tenofovir, Lamivudine plus effavirenz. This effavirenz is 600 milligram, 300 milligram, tenofovir is 300 milligram. That's all. So that completes your uh, list of uh, uh, drugs in case of pregnancy. So in case of pregnancy, no history or there is history. If there is history, check for nevirapine, uh, check for uh, NNRT and nevirapine exposure. In case of nevirapine exposure, no effavirenz. Special situation within the pregnancy, in case the female has a renal impairment, I told you tenofovir is a very uh, nephrotoxic drug. In case of, in case of pregnant female, in case of pregnant female with renal impairment. Now, same schedule, same schedule is going to follow. You replace tenofovir with tenofovir, T-L-E, no tenofovir. So you give abecavir plus lamivudine plus effavirenz. So you just replace tenofovir with abecavir, replace tenofovir with abecavir. So please remember there is also a recommendation, there is also a NACO 2018 update. There is testing of female always, all females, in case the female has not gone HIV testing, there is testing of HIV for HIV in labor room. So you always need to test a female for HIV in the labor room using a whole blood finger prick. So you take out the blood, you send it for the three assays. And in case it is positive, we start immediately even in the labor room, we start with the standard regime of T, L and E. So this is the standard regime which we give in case of pregnancy. Now let us come to the next section. We talk of another special circumstance about the child who is born to a HIV positive mother. In case of a child born to HIV positive mother, you need to give them profile access, right? You need to prevent them from, from the babies from getting disease. For the babies from getting disease, this phenomena is known as prevention of parent to child transmission PPTCT guidelines prevention of parent to child transmission guideline in HIV in child children exposed to HIV so that's just a technical way of saying that if a child is born to HIV positive mother we need to prevent the child the drug of choice for PPTCT according to uh, 2018 guidelines is simple answer nevirapine so let me try, but there are some complexities. So let me try to give you a simplified version of what happens in PTC, PPTCT protocol. So actually what I'm trying to do is I'm condensing a 300 page uh, guideline for you in simplified version. So let's see what happens to a child who is exposed to HIV. So obviously a child who is exposed to HIV, there could be two types of exposures. It could be HIV to or it could be an HIV 
it could be a HIV-1 infection. If it is HIV-1 infection, there are three possibilities which can happen. So the three things which can happen is that the, the child is born to HIV positive mother and the mother was taking ART. So in case, in case, if the mother, the mother is on ART, that means you are, that means the mother already knew that she is having HIV and the mother was taking antiretroviral therapy and she must be having a, a decently good or okay type of CD4 counts and now she becomes pregnant. So what do we need to give to the child to prevent HIV transmission? We are going to give simple answer nevirapine for six weeks. So that's your situation number one nevirapine for six weeks in all children who are exposed to HIV and the mother was taking ART the standard regime. In certain situations where the mother is found to be HIV positive in case the mother is HIV positive and she was diagnosed mother is diagnosed either during delivery or she was not taking ART no ART was given to her or in some cases the ART was given to be less than four weeks if the ART total duration in the female was given for less than four weeks that means there was no adequate ART treatment so that means in the first scenario number one which I told you before female taking ART ART for how much answer should be ART for at least four weeks in case the female was taking no ART or the ART was less or in case there was the HIV was diagnosed less not so good so now the drug of choice is again nevirapine but now this nevirapine is not for six weeks it has to be extended to 12 weeks so mind you this nevirapine could be for six weeks or it could be for 12 weeks in some cases where the female was taking ART and in the previous pregnancy she was given a nevirapine or there was nevirapine exposed so in case the mother is nevirapine exposed that means the parent and the female already had nevirapine exposure and I told you there is we suspect HIV resistance nevirapine resistance there is an archived resistance so you can remember that nevirapine NNRTIs they show archived resistance so in case of suspected archived resistance we are gonna not going to give nevirapine again so because there is a chance of nevirapine resistance the drug of choice now becomes zidovudine AZD, AZT or ZDV, whatever you want to say, it's the same word that is zidovudine. It's the same drug, zidovudine. So this zidovudine is given for six weeks. Minimum six weeks, you give zidovudine in cases of uh, nevirapine exposed children. Next, in certain situations where there is HIV-2 exposure, now in case there is HIV-2 exposure, in case of HIV-2 exposure, nevirapine does not act, NNRTIs are not useful, the drug of choice is simple, zidovudine. This zidovudine is given for 6 weeks. Zidovudine is given for 6 weeks. So in cases of child exposed to HIV, this is the treatment regime. So nevirapine is given as standard drug for 6 weeks except in cases where there is a suspected archived resistance or there uh, not a suspected in case the female was taking ART for less than uh, four weeks and also please remember this increase in nevirapine is only applicable to those children this is this is with a star mark it is applicable to those children who are having breastfeeding in case in case the child is purely in case the child is in case the child is on pure on supplementary feed pure full complete complete replacement feed replacement feed that is the mother milk is not given in case the child is not breastfed or in case the child is pure on replacement feed in those cases navirapine is extended or not extended it is given for standard six weeks so there is no extension no extension of navirapine to 12 weeks to 12 weeks so in case the baby was taking breastfeed you extend it to 12 weeks if the mother did not take 
proper ART. Uh, but in case the baby was not getting the breastfeed, in spite of the fact that mother did not take ART for complete duration, you will still keep it for six weeks. That is the standard drug regime for uh, parent to child prevention. So just talking a little bit extra about the navirapine, please remember navirapine is given to the children in certain doses only that if the child is less than 2 kilograms, less than 2000 kilograms, uh, 2000 grams, the dose is at the rate of 2 milligram per kg dose. So it, uh, we give as the rate of 0.2 ml, right? So in case it is 2000 grams till 2500 grams, the dose is at the rate of 10 milligram OD, 10 milligram OD. And in case it is for uh, uh, more than 2500 grams, in case the child is more than 2500 grams, the dose is at the rate of 15 milligram single dose. So this 10 milligram is actually equal to 1 ml. So it is given as 1 ml per day and this is given at the rate of 1.5 ml per day. So this is the dose for navirapine. In, uh, in Zidovudine, in Zidovudine, Zidovudine, the dose is, if it is less than 2500 grams, the child is less than 2500 grams, it is given at the rate of 10 milligram. If more than, more than 2500 grams, it is given at the rate of 15 milligrams. So just remember that this has to be continued for children with navirapine. Uh, with navirapine, the child has to be continued in for six weeks or extended to 12 weeks if the mother did not take uh, complete ARV profile access. So that with that, we have actually done. So please try to understand if the mother is having a navirapine in the previous pregnancy or she had taken navirapine, then those cases we need to give zidovudine or change the drug at least not give navirapine because of something known as archived resistance archived resistance to nn rtis that is navirapine so navirapine efavirenz they have this archived resistance phenomena right so that completes your uh, pregnancy and child Now let's come to the next topic that is uh, next uh, special situation we come to is about HIV TB co-infection. If you have uh, recalled from uh, the previous video module, we always uh, we talked about uh, tuberculosis and HIV that most common opportunistic infection in, tubercul in HIV is tuberculosis. So in case of HIV TB co-infection, we do something known as the program uh, has made a protocol that we do intensified case finding. This intensified case finding ICF is done in cases of high risk individuals that is all people living with HIV, all people living with HIV, we will uh, suspect TB in them. So we will screen them for tuberculosis. So you screen them for tuberculosis how? You do the screening based on two phenomena. In case they are adults, you will screen for cough or fever or night sweats or weight loss. In case of uh, adults, we will screen them for cough, fever, night sweats or weight loss. In case of children, in case of children, we'll screen them for cough fever or again weight decreased weight gain. Cough or fever or decreased weight gain and contact for TB case. In case any of this thing, cough or fever, any of this thing is yes. In case it is yes, you search for TB. You do the diagnostic modality in adults. We'll use the CBNATs or uh, or we have the sputum microscopy. But sputum microscopy is not so well uh, taken up in case of HIV. We'll just talk on these. So in case of yes, you will check them for tuberculosis. You check screen for tuberculosis. So in case it is a TB, you start. In case it is a yes TB, you start with anti-tubercular therapy. In case there is no TB, you keep them as uh, under screening. And in case there is like uh, no TB, you can also think of some other diagnosis. Now, in case 
this is like no no cough for no weight gain like nothing so in case there is no signs and symptoms of any evidence of tb now you check for whether the possibility to give the isoniazid prophylactic therapy you check for isoniazid prophylactic therapy ipt is isoniazid prophylactic therapy so this isoniazid prophylactic therapy is nothing but combination of two drugs we give inh isoniazid at the rate of 300 milligrams and uh, pyridoxine pyridoxine at the rate of 50 milligram this is to be continued for a period of six months this is what we call as inh prophylaxis isoniazid prophylactic therapy so in case it is yes tb now the problem starts now what to do so in case of yes tb how do we screen for tb i was at this point that how do we screen for tb the screening for tb is could be using two tests you can either use the sputum microscopy if you recall from our tb lectures that either we will do sputum microscopy or we can use cbnar but do you know that sputum microscopy has a less lower sensitivity uh, or specificity for uh, catching tuberculosis in case of PLHIVs because, I, uh, because there is more chances of having sputum negative type of TB. So sputum microscopy is not the investigation of choice. The first investigation of choice is CBNAT. What is CBNAT? It is cartridge based nucleic acid cartridge based nucleic acid amplification test it's a cartridge based nucleic acid amplification test which is the investigation of choice which is this investigation of choice is uh, somewhere around 85 percent sensitive for catching tuberculosis in hiv and this is the thing that we use for finding tuberculosis once this patient is tuberculosis positive in people living with HIV, they are already on ART. So that means in case of new diagnosis of ATT. So people who are already on ART, you need to continue ART. So usually in case of very severe TB or in case you have very high sputum positivity in these patients, we usually tend to start ATT first. Start ATT first start ATT first in case of new TB and HIV co-infection but if the patient is already on ART we just continue ART with some modifications in the TB treatment so you always start ATT first and then shift them over to back to the uh, ART therapies so in case of ATT in case of tuberculosis patient you start A ATT first and then you shift over to the new drug after two weeks to two months you start ART. You start ART after two weeks to two months because there is a chance of like a, in case you start ART and ATT first, there is a higher chance of flare-ups. So there is a chance of flare-ups. You have immune reconstitution syndromes or there is a, like the TB patients are more infectious. So you need to take care of the infectious part, part first rather than talking of the HIV. So based on this, you might have like a new case what are the TB treatments we start? We might have a new case which has who has never taken ATT treatment ever in his life or who has taken ATT for less than four weeks. Less than four weeks if the ATT is taken or it is never taken ATT to these uh, patients we will give two months of HRZE. Two months of HRZE -E, uh, for all seven days plus four months of H, R and E on all seven days. So it's a daily regime. So we don't write seven actually. We just don't write omit seven. So it's like simple four H, R, Z, E and four H, R, E for all new cases. In all cases who are old, who are previously treated, who have taken treatment before for at least more than four weeks. To these cases, we will give two months of H, R, Z, E, S plus we will give one month of HRCE plus five months of HR and E. Five months of isoniazid, rifampicin and ethambutol. That's a standard regime for all seven days. So it's a daily regime for all cases of TB and HIV. And of course, I think we all remember that we need to look for the 
toxicities also for rifampicin like uh, we are scared of from rifampicin what are the toxicities you are scared of rifampicin you are scared of hepatotoxicity in case of pyrazinamide you are scared of what in case of pyrazinamide there is more chances of again severe hepatotoxicity which is the most hepatotoxic it is pyrazinamide is the most hepatotoxic and uh, also in pyrazinamide there is more chances of joint pains joint uh, pains or arthralgia so in case of pyrazinamide you are scared of this in case of ethambutol we are scared of ophthalmic complications like optic neuritis or we are scared of red and green color blindness so red and green color blindness and red is like more uh, common uh, type of color blindness that we have in case of streptomycin you are scared of in case of streptomycin we are scared of nephrotoxicity or uh, sensory neural hearing loss ototoxicity right so streptomycin especially in case of uh, in case of pregnancy there is a toxic to the fetus so it is contraindicated in pregnancy also streptomycin is contraindicated in uh, myasthenia gravis myasthenia gravis uh, streptomycin is uh, contraindicated so these are the drugs which are like we are scared of and uh, in case the patient is already now let us talk of what if the patient is already on ART? If the patient is already on ART regime, now what to do? Now in case the patient is already on ART regime, it could be like TDF, TDF plus 3TC plus efavirenz. If the patient is taking the first line standard regime, you continue as it is. In case the patient was taking anything like TDF or AZD, uh, Zidovudine or Abecavir plus in case the patient was taking Zidovudine or TDF or Abecavir plus any of these things plus 3TC plus in case the patient was taking Navirapine based regime. Now in case of Navirapine, Navirapine is slightly more, not slightly, quite uh, significantly higher hepatotoxic. So therefore Navirapine is stopped and instead of Navirapine, we will place it with efavirenz. So in case the ART is Navirapine, Navirapine should be stopped and replace it with efavirenz. That is what the guidelines would say. So the, and uh, in case the patient becomes as non-TB, uh, and the patient was on HIV, you consider the isoniazid prophylaxis therapy. So that was regarding the, uh, the program for uh, HIV and tuberculosis. So now moving next to the next topic is we come to another special situation that is about HIV and hepatitis. It is another big problem which the medical officers who are treating uh, PLHIVs and who are putting people on uh, ART treatments they will face because hepatitis is another common infection that uh, PLHIVs will encounter. So all PLHIVs for your MCQs now all PLHIVs who are uh, who are either on treatment or who report to the ICTC centers or to the ART centers they are to be screened for hepatitis. So how do we do the screening? We check for their hepatitis B surface antigen. So this hepatitis B surface antigen can either be negative or it could be positive. If this HBS antigen is negative, the guidelines are that we need to give the hepatitis B vaccine to this person. So you vaccinate the person in case it is hepatitis B surface antigen negative. In case it is hepatitis B surface antigen positive, so now there is no requirement of, no need of, no requirement of HBV vaccine. So there is a special situation that in some cases, in some cases with people living with HIV, they report previous history. They report past history of uh, hepatitis infections. So in case of previous hepatitis infection, we check their what? We check their surface antibody we check for their anti hbs antibody 
we check for their anti hbs antibody and if the level of hbs antibody is more than 10 inter, uh, micro international units per ml if it is more than 10 international units micro international units per ml again there is no requirement of no need for hbv vaccine if it is less we need to ascertain so now in case it is uh, negative hbs it is okay you give them vaccine if it is positive hbs now you need to take care of this hepatitis so now if this is hepatitis you need to ascertain their level so now what we do we do we check for their lab work we check for their uh, liver function test for their liver enzymes ast alt alongside we do the uh, virology the serology screening that is we do the hbe antigen we do the hbe antibody and we also do hepatitis b virus dna particle how many using real time real time pcr technique polymerase chain reaction so using rt pcr we check for their hepatitis b viral uh, copies hepatitis b to check for the infectivity the current infection or not alongside we also do analysis of the liver about the cirrhosis so basically based on cirrhosis is your whole treatment so in case the cirrhosis is present in case cirrhosis is not present so how do you define cirrhosis earlier if you recall there was something known as meta v staging or there we used to do biopsy so that was like invasive so now we have much more uh, better investigation so you must have obviously you must be knowing much better than me that in for cirrhosis we have elastographies we can do liver elastography we can do liver elastography that is a fibro scan or we can do apri apri scoring that is ast to platelet platelet ratio index or we can do the fibrosis for fib4 classification or fibrosis 4 so of course fibrosis 4 is one of the most easiest classification or we do apri so apri is uh, most commonly used for to uh, to determine the uh, the level of cirrhosis so based on cirrhosis you either treat the patient or you wait so in case the apri score in case the apri score is more than 2 it is a direct indication to treat the patient so what are the indications for treatment indications for treatment are indications for treatment for hepatitis or refer to a gastroenterologist for further management of hepatitis is in case there is the apri score of more than 2 or if the apri score is less than 2 but age is more than 30 years and there is increased alt there is increased alt with a high hbv dna levels of more than 20000 uh, international units per milliliter so if the high hbv uh, dna levels or if there is active uh, liver uh, problem like more alts are there and the age is more than 30 again it is a direct indication to start treatment so in both these cases you will start treatment right in case this apri score is less than 2 apri score is less than 2 then we simply wait and keep these patients for annual follow up so what is the H art regime that we give to hepatitis b cases so in art in all hepatitis b cases art in all hepatitis in hepatitis B infections is standard regime that we use is 3TC, TDF, and F virus. So it is the standard regime of T, L, and E that I told you that is the first line you do everywhere TDF, 3TC, and F virus. In certain cases, in certain cases, the TDF may be replaced, TDF may be replaced with uh, zidovudine in case of TDF toxicity or due to hepatotoxicity TDF is nephrotoxic and hepatotoxic so TDF may be replaced with uh, zidovudine AZT so in those cases we might have uh, but there is a point for uh, you to know also that do you know that which of the following is the most effective drug 
the most effective drug is 3TC lamivudine. Lamivudine is one of the best drug in hepatitis for HIV. But do you also know that 3TC has maximum chance or it has maximum chance of HBV resistance? Do you know that mostly within two years, within two years of treatment, within two years, 50% of the patients will become HBV resist, uh, will become lamivudine will be not functioning in HBV patients and there is HBV resistance, 50%, 50% HBV resistance in two years and which is like in four years it goes out to be almost 90 to 95 percent patients are uh, HBV resistant. So uh, 3TC is one uh, drug which is uh, most potent in hepatitis and it should be given with tenofovir with TDF or it should not be given at all. So in cases where TDF is replaced with that, that's where the point came up that in cases where TDF is replaced with the uh, with the uh, zidovudine, in those cases 3TC should also be given with caution because like uh, there is uh, uh, other drugs like entecavir can be given. So anyways that, that uh, is a separate story so the uh, drug of choice for HIV in case of hepatitis stays to be 3TC plus tenofovir plus efavirenz and there are chances uh, because of lamivudine. Lamivudine is most potent drug and there are chances of hepatic flares. There are chances of hepatic flares whenever we put this patient on uh, ARTs and uh, therefore that is the reason that early uh, hepatic flares may sometime be confusing for the doctor with hepatotoxicity so you have to be cautious on which drugs to be given which drugs are not to be given. So, so the next is uh, we will talk about so that was regarding the hepatitis B infection. I think everybody knows it that all this also you should be knowing that all the children who are born to hepatitis B positive females all children who are born to hepatitis B positive females they need to be vaccinated. They need to be vaccinated at birth then at 6, 10 and 14 weeks right. Uh, with vaccine for hepatitis B plus they should also be given hepatitis B immunoglobulin at the rate of 0.5 ml intramuscular dose. So all the children who are born to hepatitis B positive mothers they should be given hepatitis B immunoglobulin 0.5 ml intramuscular and vaccine 6, 10, 14 weeks along with the birth vaccine 10 micrograms intramuscular vaccine hepatitis B vaccine. So that covers your hepatitis B. So the next uh, topic we will take up is about the topic number seven, special situation number seven about HCV infection and HIV. I think HCV you all know HCV is a chronic type of HIV. All acute HIVs. Uh, at, uh, hepatitis C virus infections out of them out of them 15 to 50 percent are self-resolved and remaining might stay so roughly remaining like 50 to 80 percent they will stay as chronic HCV infections out of those chronic do you know that out of those 80 to 90 percent are stable and they do not show any signs of remission but do you know that 10 to 15 percent may show aggravated or cirrhosis they might show a uh, extensive liver damage out of those 10 to 15 percent of cirrhotic patient out of these cirrhotic patients do you know that out of these 70 to 80 percent of patients they show very slow progression towards renal uh, towards liver failure but there are certain 10 to 15 percent 10 to 20 percent patients who might show active liver failure very fast liver failure they will develop into liver failure or they might develop into hepatocellular cancer so do you know that out of all the hcv patients out of all the hcv patients we roughly say two to three percent of all patients might unfortunately land up into a liver failure stage or a hepatocellular therefore hcv and hepatitis uh, C infections and HIV uh, concomitant infection is like devastating for the patient. 
and therefore we need to give them some drugs. So the drug of choice for hepatitis C infection and HIV we need to treat hepatitis C and HIV. The standard drug for HIV is same answer 3TC plus tenofovir plus efavirenz. So the standard regime stays as TLE and you need to be cautious about the tenofovir because it might land up into hepatotoxicity or nephrotoxicity. So for hepatitis C, we will check whether this patient is cirrhotic or non-cirrhotic. In case of cirrhosis, the drug of choice is sofosbuvir plus velpa tasvir. So we give uh, uh, NS5 inhibitors, NS5A and NS5B inhibitors, that is sofosbuvir and velpatasvir. So this is like 100 milligram and sofosbuvir is at the rate of 400 milligram. So this has to be continued for in cases of cirrhosis, whereas in case of non-cirrhotic, the drug of choice is sofosbuvir, same at the rate of 400 milligram plus we give Daclatasvir. Daclatasvir, this is given at the rate of uh, 60 milligram. 60 milligram and these both have to be continued for 3 months. They have to be continued for 12 to 14 weeks. 12 to 14 weeks, we give the hepatitis C uh, drugs. So we have these directly acting antiviral drugs, DAAs. These belong to the TAA group. So sofosbuvir is 5B, uh, NS5B inhibitors and uh, daclatasvir is NS5A inhibitors. So uh, you use these directly acting antiviral drugs for hepatitis C and the HIV is given as such the uh, tenofovir plus lamivudine plus efavirenz. So that completes all your situations. We have discussed all the situations for ARTs. We have discussed all the situations for ARTs in special situations. ART, what we have discussed till now, we have discussed ART in pregnancy. We have discussed ART in children exposed to like HIV positivity. We have discussed about tuberculosis. We have discussed about hepatitis. Right. So please remember the standard regime. The standard regime is T, L and E. Tenofovir is toxic drug, nephrotoxic, hepatotoxic. And uh, of course, there are a lot of uh, toxicities from lamivudine. But one of the safest drug is lamivudine. Lamivudine is one of the safest drug. Efavirenz and navirapine are notorious for archived resistance. Tenofovir is nephro more than hepatotoxic. Right? So in case of, uh, that is the reason that in case of uh, tuberculosis, we do not give rifampicin and we substitute it with rifabutin. So that was regarding the ART. So in the next video module, uh, we'll be talking of uh, the toxicities related to ARTs and the post exposure and the pre exposure post exposure and the pre exposure profile access. What are the what are the standard uh, NACO guidelines? Thank you so much for watching this module. All the very best.